everybody, it's Malik again. Uh, sorry I haven't posted in a, in a while. Uh, been a little busy, but... So I'm going to give you a, kind of a two-for-one tonight. Um, so again, before we before we get started, if uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please you know give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, I uh, really do appreciate it. We're we're getting right at 900 subscribers now, so that's very pleased with that. So I appreciate everybody who's subscribing, everybody who's sending me comments. I, I try to get back in touch with you if you know if you're asking a question or if you just post something. I, I always try to get back in touch with you. So. Uh, so let's get this thing going. So, the last video we used Ettercap to do an art poison and used Wireshark to capture um, a file in transit over a network share. This is pretty much the same thing. We're still going to use Ettercap, which we could use can enable. I mean, there's plenty of programs we could use, but when I'm in Linux, I typically use Ettercap. Uh, and we're still going to use Wireshark, but this time we're going to capture an email. And while we're at it, we're also going to capture FTP. Now, the trick with the FTP is we're not going to stop at just grabbing the credentials. I see a lot of people just stop capturing FTP traffic once they get the login credentials. Well, if you're already capturing packets, if there was a file transferred over FTP, you can grab the file at the same time. Uh, it's a little bit different on how you can grab it. You know, it's it's not as in your face, uh, but you can still get it. So we're going to take a look at both of them. So my setup here is, you know, I've got this machine here. I just have it set up with Thunderbird with, uh, you know, basically a local account. Here's my other machine almost a mirror image of it, and of course my Kali box. So let's go ahead and get Kali set up and ready to capture. Now of course we could go the long way and we can go into you know wireless attacks and uh, you know, or exploitation or sniffing and run you know Ettercap through here or we could just do it from the command prompt but yeah we'll do it from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an ARP poison. And typically we ARP poison inside of a network to poison a switch to turn it into a hub. So we can basically capture packets not intended for us. So we're going to start the sniffing. And we have to find our host. Now I've done this before, so... Okay, see, I don't have a host list in here, so I have to scan for hosts. Okay, these are my live machines. Okay, I hate not being able to drag that thing over. These are the two machines I want to poison. So I'll do 51 and 52. So I'm going to do 51, add to target 1, 52, add to target 2 and I want to poison them. And I want to sniff their connections. It tells you it's art poisoning, and I can tell it to start sniffing, although it's going to tell me it's already started. So now I am capturing packets that go between those two machines. Now we'll go ahead in, and we'll run Wireshark, and we'll start capturing on ETH0. So the first thing we're going to capture is emails. So let's switch to server 1. See, do I have it open? I do. This is student 1. We're going to send a message to student 2. So we're going to write a message to student 2. GC um, PG dot local. Oops, and if I spell student right, it will resolve. And let's make sure we 
got it running. For some reason I'm finding them. That's all right. Well, we'll see if it still works. For some reason it's not resolving out the name, but we'll find it out. In fact, let's take a look and make sure student two is, make sure I have that set up right. Yes, student zero two. Just CPG. Perfect. Just not resolving out yet. All right, so important info. Here is the file you were looking for. The password to get into it is password 9. As you know, people do that all the time. Oh, let's attach something to it. Let's see, let's find something. Oh, let's just drop into our setup folder and let's drop some contacts over there and let's send it now let's switch over and see there it is all right so it did come over all right so the email came over now let's see if we can capture it from Wireshark I'm going to stop the capture, and for now, just to save, I'm going ahead and I'm going to stop the man in the middle attack. Now, the easiest way to, f to find this email, of course, is to knock it down to the type of traffic that we were looking for. And let's see what we've got. All right, that's all right. Let's just go ahead and clear any filters we have out of here. So there, there's our retransmission. Oh. All right. Well, we're showing pop transmissions. Right. See, so username and password for the pop. There's the data fragments. All right. That's really what I was looking for right there anyway. The IMF. So we can follow the TCP stream by right-clicking it and following the stream. Or I can take a look at the header. There it is. Here's the file you were looking for. The password to get into it is password 9. That's the body of the email. And you can see right there that shows the attachment file. Okay. Well, now that we see the attachment file, and you can see what type of protocol it is, the internet message format, we can file export IMF. So there's the email. We can save it. I'll save it to the desktop. And there it is. And there is the contacts CSV file. There's the, the full attachment right here if you actually wanted the attachment. You know, if it was a picture, it would show up here. If it was an Excel sheet, it would still show here, but this is typically the one you'd go ahead and save this separately. So we can do, you know, a save as. Save this to our desktop. Uh, we can, we can go ahead and get out of there. Um, 
Where'd you hide it? There it is. And we'll bring it in here. It is a it was a comma delimited file. You're doing okay. And there you go. You now have any attachment that is sent over email. Pretty sharp. Now, let's do this again. I still have my my host in here, same two hosts, so I'm still gonna art poison and sniff them. Oops, the art poison sniff. And you can see down here, I'm still hitting 51 and 52. Again, I always make sure it says this already starting. We will clear anything we have out of here and we'll start another capture. Now, let's switch to our servers. I'll go ahead and close this. And on this server here, we are running an FTP site. So we're going to switch to our other server and we're going to connect to it. So, let's just do this. Just so you can see it a little bit easier. Let's go big. <laughs> FTP 192.168.1.51. All right, so it's going to ask for our login. And it's going to ask for our password. And of course, when you connect via FTP versus uh, <coughs> over the terminal window, you don't see the password being typed in, but you know you typed it in right if you get an FTP prompt. Okay. Now if I just do a DIR, they've got uh, an ASP.NET folder, they got a files folder. Well, we're going to upload a folder to them. Of course, if there were files there, we could download some. But I have a folder on the root of C, uh, which is a JPEG. And I'm just going to put that to the FTP server. Oops. Oh. Log in. i got to tell you exactly where it's at. All right. There we go. Transfer starting. Transfer complete. Byte sent. So if I do another DIR, you will see that that file has been uploaded. It is a JPEG file. All right. Let's see what Wireshark says about that. Let's go ahead and stop the poison. And let's take a look at just FTP data. Of course, a big problem with FTP, plain text. Username, administrator, password, PA22W0RD. Okay. So we got the username and password very simply. It's an FTP site. We are now logged in. We grabbed the port. We did a list. Transfer starting, transfer complete. So we can see inside of here that we are doing a transfer. And right here, we can see that we transferred a file called login.jpg. So we have the username and password. How do we grab the file? Well, on the FTP prompt, going to right click, follow TCP stream. So this is the TCP stream of the two machines, the entire conversation from one to the other. 
Well, what you need to know, we know this is a JPEG file. If you really want to see, in fact, we can take a look at it just in a wall. It's a whole lot easier. If you really want to find the file, we have to find the raw data. You do this by finding the file signature of the file that was transmitted. I happen to know the file signatures for JPEG start with FFD8. So if I look for FFD8, okay, didn't find anything in this stream, but there are multiple streams. Right here, I'm looking at stream 0. Well, what if I look at stream 1 and look for FFD8? Nope. Stream 2. FFD8. That is the beginning of the JPEG file. This is the file. That's the transfer of the file. That one packet right there is the transfer of the file. That's the one you want to save. So I'm going to save it as raw. But I'm going to change the name. Login.jpg. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure the extension is correct. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. I can close that. Restore that down. There's a login.jpg file. That's what they transmitted. And if you want to prove it, let me close this. I will show you on the root of C. This is a file I transmitted. That's what it is. Same file. It's just a matter of knowing the file signature. So there are a ton of things that you can do with Wireshark. I mean, yeah, you can export. Again, we've, we've taken a look at export IMF for emails, HTTP, of course, for, for anything transferred over port 80, SMB, anything that uses server message block, trivial file transport. The packet would not have showed up in TFTP. If we were to export it through TFTP, we would not have found it. Um, it just doesn't show. Uh, and I got to have the capture going anyway. Uh, so look for your file signatures. Just find the extension of the file. XLS, does it Word? It doesn't matter. Every file extension has a file signature. Find the raw data that matches that file signature. That's the file you save. Just make sure you save it with the right extension and it will reconstruct the file. All files at their base level are hexadecimal anyway, uh, which is why we use scalpel to cut files apart from each other. Um, so, hope that helped you out and showed you some more pretty cool things that you can do with Wireshark and Ettercap. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be Ettercap. Uh, there's, there's plenty of poisoning tools out there. Um, it's just one of the easiest ones to deal with. So, there's two more things out there for you. So go play with that stuff, and uh, let me know what you think about the videos, and I will catch all of you guys soon with something new I'm working on. Till then, have a great night.